Hey folks, Dr. Hagmeyer here, and today I want to talk about a huge problem for an increasing number of people who suffer with things like autoimmune disorders, allergies, depression, anxiety, food sensitivities, chronic pain, chronic inflammation, thyroid diseases, digestive disorders, and just a whole host of other different health problems. If you struggle with any of these, it's in your best interest to learn more about a leaky gut, but more importantly, the causes behind a leaky gut, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about in today's video. I want you to think of the, the lining of your digestive tract as a, as a mesh net with extremely fine, small holes. And this lining is critical to your health uh, in that it works as a barrier. It keeps out the real big particles that can damage the system, and it allows the smaller particles to just pass, pass on through, okay? Now, when someone has a leaky gut, uh, that's also known as what's called in uh, intestinal permeability. Uh, this net in your digestive tract becomes inflamed, and as it becomes inflamed, it also becomes leaky, which now causes even bigger holes and gaps to develop in your net, okay? Now, why is this such a problem, okay? Well, here's why. Things that normally can't pass through this net are now able to get through, and when these big particles enter into the, into the, the body's circulatory or the, or the bloodstream, they create a massive inflammatory response, okay? So these are gonna be, these foreign proteins are, are gonna come from the foods we eat. They're gonna be viruses, they're gonna be bacteria. They may even be the foreign hormones that our bodies are, are constantly uh, being exposed to on a daily basis. There are things like vaccines, for example, that can uh, aggravate the immune system. We're actually seeing more and more autoimmune disorders being linked back to certain vaccines. Uh, there are medications that can be a, a part of this. There are bacterial toxins, okay? So there's certain bacteria in the, in the gut that don't belong there. They create what's called an LPS, or uh, they create a, an, what's called an endotoxin. And these endotoxins are very, very uh, antigenic. They, they, they create a massive inflammatory response uh, with the body's immune system. In that net, they create uh, just a, a slew of, of different adverse reactions that happen in your body, okay? Now, this is not good for individuals who are already suffering with chronic health problems or any kind of autoimmune disorder, okay? Because this inflammation uh, throughout the system can cause many, many different symptoms that you may never realize can be attributed to your gut, okay? I can't begin to tell you how many times where I begin to work with a patient, let's say, and they have a thyroid problem or they have a GI problem, but at the same time of having a thyroid problem or a GI problem, they also can't sleep, they also are depressed, they are uh, experiencing anxiety, and many times, very, very often, we will begin to correct that gut, and their depression is gone, their anxiety is gone, their insomnia is gone, okay? But some of the more common symptoms that kind of may or, or should make you think that you, you have a leaky gut are gonna be things like bloating, um, you notice that you're becoming increasingly sensitive to certain foods, if you have a thyroid disorder, very, very common to see a leaky gut associated with that. If you have fatigue, if you have chronic joint pain, that's a very, very uh, you know, common, common issue that we see with a leaky gut. Um, I've already mentioned anxiety and depression, but uh, headaches are very common. Skin issues like rosacea, okay, dermatitis, cystic acne. Many people don't realize this. If you actually Google cystic acne and uh, a leaky gut, you'd be surprised at how many uh, hits that you'll see on Google, okay, in terms of the connection between acne and the gut. And there's tons of, of information I have about hormones and how those hormones are, are part of that as well. Uh, if you obviously have digestive problems, I want you to think that you have a leaky gut. If you have weight gain, okay, something where you've been trying to lose weight, you're eating a, a good diet, you're exercising, and you're just not losing that weight, that could be a leaky gut. And then finally, there is a, a syndrome by the name of syndrome X, which can also be associated with that leaky gut. Um, one of the biggest warning signs that you may have a leaky gut uh, can be experiencing uh, chemical sensitivities, okay? Uh, a recent study that I came across appeared in the journal Diabetes, and what they went on to say is that there's a strong body of evidence pointing to a leaky gut as a major cause of autoimmune diseases, including type one diabetes, okay? So if you're a diabetic and you're taking insulin, it is worth your attention to look into whether or not you have a gut, uh, a leaky gut rather, okay? Now, another problem with leaky gut is that obviously it can cause malabsorption, okay? So now you start to end up with all sorts of, of vitamin deficiencies and, and mineral deficiencies and 
Um, it's very common to see vitamin D deficiency. It's very common to see magnesium. It's very common to see zinc. It's very, very common to see iron deficiency or, or anemia. So again, very important things to, to, to wrap your head around as it relates to not only the symptoms that you have, but where are those symptoms really originating, okay? So what do you do if you have a leaky gut or that you suspect you have a leaky gut, okay? Well, there are several different layers or causes behind a leaky gut that I wanna discuss with you. The first one is diet, okay? Now this shouldn't be a surprise to you, okay? The foods we eat are either inflammatory, meaning they cause inflammation in our body, or they have an anti-inflammatory property in our body, okay? So diet plays a, a big role in helping the gut heal. If you have food sensitivities or food allergies that have been identified through testing, you need to avoid these foods, okay? I can't begin to tell you how many people will come to my office and maybe they've had testing where they've identified a leaky gut with maybe another practitioner, but they weren't doing a very good job at eliminating those foods, okay? So there's no cheating here. You have to be 100% consistent until that gut heals up. Otherwise, you just keep re-inflaming the gut, okay? So very important, eliminate those foods. Some people need to eliminate these foods obviously longer than others. Um, and some people, depending on the, the certain variables and, and their uh, health issues that are going on, it's not uncommon to have to eliminate these foods for 12 months. Some people have to eliminate them for 18 months. So just be aware, don't reintroduce these foods unless you get retested and you see that A, you've corrected the leaky gut, or B, you're no longer mounting uh, an antibody response against those foods, okay? So always use retesting to determine if it's okay to reintroduce the foods. I know there's a lot of information on the website where, uh, on, on, on the internet rather, where you know, it says just eliminate this food for 30 days or for three weeks, but you cannot rely on symptoms like a lot of people say on the internet. And I will tell you that 30 days is no way near the amount of time that you need to give your body the rest from this continuous uh, source of, of irritant, okay? Now, if you want to learn more about practical tips to, to start healing your leaky gut, I encourage you to visit my website, drhagmeyer.com. That's D-R-H-A-G-M-E-Y-E-R.com. Do a search on leaky gut and leaky gut cure. Uh, look at the uh, couple of videos that I've done on lectins and a leaky gut. I've done some videos on uh, why it's important to eliminate nightshades, okay, and how those can potentiate a leaky gut or make a leaky gut worse. Uh, but with this being said, I want you to realize that it's important that you work very, very closely with a doctor who understands what kinds of tests you need to have done so that you can really address the leaky gut and get to the, to the real source of it, okay? I see too many people who have started a leaky gut cure program but don't know the causes behind their leaky gut. So again, if you visit my website, you'll learn more about those, those causes that need to be identified. You'll learn more about some of the kinds of testing that you should have done. And the, the other thing here is if, if you should, you should always be weary of anyone on the internet that's selling a leaky gut program if they're not testing you for a leaky gut, okay? This is just something that makes me nauseous, okay? If you don't identify the cause, you'll be likely like, like a dog chasing his tail, just going round and round and round, okay? So you never know exactly what's causing it unless you get tested for it, okay? Don't waste your money on, on somebody selling a program if uh, you know, it, it's not about testing you know, the, the different areas or the different causes behind why you have a leaky gut. The second layer of a leaky gut is what's called a bacterial imbalance, okay? So bacterial toxins known as LPS or LPS bacterial toxins, like I said earlier, can elicit a very, very strong inflammatory response in your body. And that has the ability to create an autoimmune attack uh, through something called molecular mimicry. So that's not a good thing. The third layer behind the cause of a leaky gut is chronic stress, okay? During times of chronic stress, during chronic illness, uh, prolonged illness, prolonged stress, your adrenal glands will secrete cortisol. Now, too much cortisol, okay, which can be done by evaluating an adrenal salivary test, too much of that cortisol is going to impair the way the gut lining begins to heal. So it actually slows down how you regenerate new tissue. And too little cortisol, on the other hand, is going to allow an inflammatory response to go unchecked. So you'll have all this inflammation in your body but you won't be able to address the inflammation because your cortisol levels are so suppressed, okay? So that's where you're gonna to wanna to obviously start out in terms of working on the adrenals. Now, the fourth layer behind a leaky gut is toxin overload, okay? This shouldn't be a surprise either. Medications often prescribed for allergies and asthma, pain medications, antibiotics, steroids, steroid inhalers, uh, excessive alcohol, excessive caffeine, sugar, 
These are things that all tear down your gut lining, okay? So again, hopefully those four things will help you understand just a little bit more about what is causing your leaky gut and also help you move in a direction uh, with your practitioner to get tested for those things, okay? Well, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, share it with some friends and family and loved ones that might be suffering with, with uh, all those symptoms that we just discussed and how it relates to a leaky gut. I'm hoping uh, today's video just gives you a better understanding and a better appreciation as to the importance of your gut, regardless of what kind of health problem that you might be suffering from. Again, just a reminder, don't buy some cookie cutter leaky gut program being peddled by someone on the internet. Again, this makes me just nauseous, okay? Healing needs to be individualized, okay? So I hope that uh, covers just a, a bunch of information on a leaky gut. And again, uh, stay tuned. Take care.